Uh, I began to grope with it about the recess, but the thought of an instant reassured me. I placed my hand upon the solid fabric of the catacombs and felt satisfied. I reapproached the wall. I replied to the yells of him who clamored. I re-echoed, I aided, I surpassed them in volume and in strength. I did this, and the clamorer grew still. It was now midnight, and my task was drawing to a close. I had completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I had finished a portion of the last and the eleventh. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I struggled with its weight. I placed it partially in its destined position. But now there came from out the niche a low laugh that erected the hairs upon my head. It was succeeded by a sad voice, which I had difficulty in recognizing as that of the noble Fortunato. The voice said, <laughs> It's a very good joke indeed, an excellent jest. We will have many a rich laugh about it at the palazzo <laughs> over our wine. <laughs> the Amontillado, I said. <laughs> the Amontillado. <laughs> but is it not getting late? Will not they be awaiting us at the palazzo, the Lady Fortunado and the rest? Let us be gone. Yes, I said, let us be gone. For the love of God, Montresor. Yes, I said, for the love of God. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud. Fortunato? No answer. I called again. Fortunato? No answer still. I thrust a torch through the remaining aperture and let it fall within. There came forth in return only a jingling of the bells. My heart grew sick on account of the dampness of the catacombs. I hastened to make an end of my labor. I forced the last stone into its position. I plastered it up. Against the new masonry, I re-erected the old rampart of bones. For the half of a century, no mortal has disturbed them. In pace requiescat. All right, so let's now turn to this story at level one. <clears throat> and let's ask what happens in this story. <coughs> it actually is a pretty simple story, yes? It is a tale of revenge, no question. Let's go back now to the beginning of the story and pay attention to the way in which Poe geniusly sets us up for the end of the story. Notice what the last word of the story is. What is the last word of the story? Just to prep for exam prep. Last word of the story is what? Well, in translation, what is it? Rest in peace, right? In other words, the idea is He's been buried alive. This is what we say, of course, when we put somebody in a grave or something like this. Notice the opening of the story. We're going to find out, we have to find out, what it is that motivates the speaker of our story to do something so terrible to another person. Notice the opening lines on page 61. Read them with me. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as I best could. But when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. Put it in your own words. What does he say on, at page 61? What does he say? What is it that motivated this behavior in the first place? It was what? A need for revenge, right? He says, I'd had enough. I was ready for revenge. And so I was going to do something. Then notice the next sentence. The word you. You who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. This is fascinating. Let's put it in our notes at 2B. Poe has this genius ability to reach out and kind of grab you, the reader, and bring you into the story. 
and somehow make you feel like you're a part of the story. He says, you guys know me well enough. It's as if he is speaking to you, who is his friend. And he says, you know me well enough. I never let him know what was coming. I took care of my business without any threats of any kind. Now, he says it finally, it had to be sweet revenge. It was not enough for him to just go and stab him. I mean, this has often been the question. Let's go ahead and raise it now. Why doesn't he just lead him down into the catacombs or somewhere and just knife him and be done with it? Why doesn't he just sneak up behind him and slit his throat, for example, and the guy doesn't even, Fortunato wouldn't even know that it's him? No, no. He says, no, no. My plan, let's put it in our notes, this is premeditated murder, yes? My plan, my premeditation, to meditate means to think, premeditate means to think in advance of. My plan, he says, to premeditate was simple. I wanted to make sure that in the end, he would know it was me. So he had to have a plan. Number two, the plan, of course, involves two things. First of all, there is the speaker's ability to fake well, right? So in other words, Fortunato never sees it coming at all. And number two, the psychology. The psychology. Now let's write this one down. Notice that we have a very interesting psychological game that's being played, right? Where he is going to play with Fortunato's ego. Now, how does he do that? Jot down how he does that. Well, of course, the first thing that he does is he says to Fortunato, I've purchased this cask of wine, pipe of wine, this bottle of wine, named Amontillado. I'm worried, though, that maybe I got fooled. Maybe I got taken. I need an expert to help me know whether I got the real thing. Now, I could go and ask Lucchese if you're not able to go. Of course, this will be enough. Fortunato's ego will be, no, 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 no. I will help you. Notice as well that even all the way down into the catacombs, our speaker constantly gives him clues, we call this foreshadowing, right? That something terrible is coming and Fortunato cannot see it coming. He just simply will drink a little bit more wine and then we've got a situation where in the end, of course, the, author, the reader, you know what's coming, right? You know, whoa, he is leading him down into the underground where he is going to bury him alive. Not lead him down in the underground and slit his throat. No, 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 no. Not lead him down in the underground and bang him over the head, for example, with a shovel and then leave him. No, no. He wants a certain kind of death. A death where the guy will be buried alive and will know in the end that it was him. By the way, make a note. How is Fortunato dressed? Look at the picture on page 62. That gives you a hint. The picture on page 62 tells you how Fortunato is dressed. He is dressed in the form of a clown with bells hanging off of his hat to look like a joker. If you've ever played cards and you know the joker, if you look at the joker, it looks a lot like this 62, this drawing on page 62, right? What is, jot down, what's significant about the fact that he will find Fortunato at a party where Fortunato is dressed up like a joker? Of course, what is the joker when you play cards? That's that card that can kind of fool you. Joke, of course, means to fool, right? So note that Poe is playing with all kinds of, let's put it in our notes, it to be irony. We got lots of irony going on in this text, don't we? Fortunato is dressed as a clown. He is being led as a sheep to the slaughter. He is being led to the catacombs where he will be buried alive. Does he have any clue about what's coming? None at all. Not even a little. The reverse psychology is fascinating. Let's put that in our notes. The methodology that's used is reverse psychology. You are not feeling well. You probably shouldn't go down into the catacombs. No, no. 
I definitely need. No, no, it's okay. I'll get my help from Lucchese. Lucchese is way better anyway. It's not a deal. I once had a student that said, I totally used this because I needed to go on a trip and I really didn't want to go. And I certainly didn't want to go alone. So I told my best friend, I, 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 you know, I would like for you to come, but our other friend I'm going to ask instead. Unless, of course, you want to. And then immediately, no, I, I'm going with you, not, not, not him. I'm going with you. This is reverse psychology. In other words, let's put it in our notes. The ability to manipulate someone by using their ego against them. Right? Of course, think about it. You, the reader, are literally watching this happen, and there's nothing you can do about it. I've had a freshman reader that once said, I want to like say to Fortunato, dude, are you that stupid? You're letting him lead you down into the catacombs, but nothing can be done to stop this. Down into the catacombs they go. He is, uh, Fortunato gets increasingly more drunk. Note some of the ironic kinds of questions like at the bottom of page 63. How long have you had that cough? In other words, it's almost like he's actually worrying about his health or something like that. Notice, it's nothing, it's nothing, he says. Uh, we will go back, he says on page 64. Your health, I'm worried about you. And then he says it. Right? The speaker says it. You're rich, respected, admired, beloved. You're happy as once I was. And of course, if Fortunato was astute, he would be like, why, why are you speaking this way? But Fortunato's not enough to be not smart enough to figure it out. The cough is nothing. He says, I will not die of a cough. The irony. True. True. I replied. In other words, he knows how he's going to die, yeah? Um, and then, of course, a drink, and it's the toast. Note the irony of the toast. I drink to your long life. Then the question is asked about the mantra source. What is your arms? What is your crest? And, of course, the irony is that the crest that shows your family crest is of a person who has a snake biting on their heel, but he's stomping on the snake. And then look at the bottom of page 64 with your footnote. Out of the Latin, this translation is, no one attacks me with impunity. In other words, if you jack on me, I will get you back. It may take a long time, but sooner or later, I will get you back. Revenge, sweet revenge, we might say. Notice we're below, we're told on page 65, we're below the river's bed. Note the irony of that. It's as if he's drowning as he goes down into the catacombs. The river is over our head. We're way down under the ground now in the grave. This is a cemetery under the ground. By the way, in Europe, you had to do this a lot because you don't have enough room for large cemeteries. And so they would bury people under the ground in these catacombs, right? Kind of freaky. Then there's the question about masonry. Are you a mason? This is a secret organization. And our speaker will say, oh yeah, I'm a mason for sure. Prove it. And he pulls out this trowel. Well, of course, the audience, the reader, already starts to figure out, oh, no way. He is taking this guy down into the ground, under the ground. He's going to bury him alive down there. Fortunato still doesn't get it. Get, it doesn't understand it, doesn't get it. Let's put it in our notes at 2B. Notice all the foreshadowing that's going on here. You literally want to scream at Fortunato and say, dude, you cannot be this stupid. Why would he follow this guy down in the underworld? And of course the answer is, he trusts him, right? He trusts him. In other words, he has no idea of just how nasty our speaker is, right? Into the deep crypt, he, go, he takes him to a small room and like a rat in a cage, right? He is chained up against the wall and then you have the closing around. Notice, on page 66, even after he chains him to the wall, he says it to him. I'll give you one more chance. No, no. The Amontillado. That's all I care about. Where is he? I want to know. In other words, to the very end, Fort, uh, uh, Fortunato has no idea. Of course, it's interesting. Fortunato, the name, sounds like what word? Fortune. That is to say, the future. The ironies just keep piling up as we come to the end of the story, right? 
Of course, he is a mason as he begins to build. We have some moaning that starts to happen and some crying. Notice we're told he listens with satisfaction once the seventh tier has been built. And he sits down on the bones and he listens to the screaming. What is going on here, do you think? Some readers have said it's not enough to kill him. He wants to enjoy the killing of this person. So he's going to let him scream for a while. Then he himself gets involved in the screaming. Why do you think he screams? Many readers have pointed out the point of him screaming is to prove to Fortunato, you can scream all you want to. Dude, we're way too deep down under the ground for anyone to ever hear. By the way, why don't we have anybody in the house way upstairs? Well, he says, I made it a point to tell them all that I would be going away for the weekend and to demand that they would all make sure and not leave the house and make sure and guard it, which was proof that they would all immediately bolt. Again, his understanding of reverse psychology. If I tell them to stay, they're all going to go. In other words, he has this ability to play mind games, we might say. At the very end of the story, on page 67, notice, he says, I trembled, then I struggled, and then there was this low laugh, and he says it, a very good joke, which takes us to the word, to the word joker, right? A very good joke, ha, ha, ha. You got, okay, 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 you're messing with me, which is a really interesting 3B question. Can you remember the last time somebody messed around on you and you were like starting to get a little bit freaked out and then they went, dude, just kidding, just kidding, right? Fortunato was convinced, he's like, just kidding, just kidding, right? We're, hey, dude, we're just kidding here, right? This is like a, okay, 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 you got me, you got me, nice one, nice one. But the tears just keep coming up and up and up Notice at the end, Fortunato was in screaming. Silence. What is up with the silence, do you think? Well, we're told his, his drunkenness is kind of worn off, and now he's starting to realize, oh, I'm totally, totally jacked. Right? Notice the irony, though, at the bottom of page 67. Let us be gone. Yes, he said. Let us be gone. And then it's for the love of God. In other words, I beg of you. And yes, he says, for the love of God. What do, you, what, what do you think that means? He says it back to him. Right, right, right. This is for the love of God. Many have pointed out, this is that notion of revenge. In other words, you mess on me, I mess on you. Now, a 3A observation already. Let's go there. A 3A observation is, in the Italian poetic tradition, there is a very famous poem called The Divine Comedy by a poet named Dante. And the first part of that poem is called Inferno, Hell, where Dante visits the underworld, and there in the underworld, he gets to meet people who he knows. People Dante doesn't like, he puts them in hell. In other words, for the love of God, for justice sake. To some degree, let's ask this question. Do you have any sense that Montessoro has any feelings of bad about doing this, any regrets, any guilt. No, no sense at all, right? No answer finally calls. All we hear, the jingling of the bells on his cap as he's shaking his head with those bells on his cap. Put a note to yourself at 3A. One of Poe's most famous poems is called The Bells. You'll take a look at that one in your junior year, and it's this notion that the bells keep echoing and ringing back and forth and back and forth. Finally, he says it, My heart grew sick. It was the dampness of the catacombs that made it so. I hastened to make an end of my labor, forced the last stone into its position and plastered it up, then moved everything back, and the final story is, May he rest in peace. He buries him alive. All right, let's go to level two and level three really quickly. At level 2A, well, what do you want to write down as possible messages or themes for a text like this one? Obviously, one major one is the idea of revenge. You might do things to some people, and they wait a long time before they finally decide they're going to jack you up. Okay? And number two, we can't always understand why some people hold a grudge. Some people hold a grudge for a really long time. Other people don't hold the grudge for that long of a time. Notice here, it took a long time and a lot of planning to kind of set all this up, right? Another major message. 
Sometimes our ego will lead us to do stupid things, right? Where, for example, people can play head games with us and, and kind of mess around with our ego and we'll do something that we probably shouldn't do. Skaters, for example, know this. I bet you can't do this trick. You know you can't do this trick and you know you shouldn't try to do this trick. And yet, when somebody who you know says, I don't know, man, this is kind of hard. I don't think you can do it. Now all of a sudden, oh yeah, I'm going to prove to you. In other words, that idea that sometimes our ego can get us into some serious problems if we're not careful. All right, let's, think, let's talk 2B really quickly. Obviously, we've got a beautiful example of foreshadowing happening in this text. Obviously, we've got great examples of irony. There's all kinds of irony. The Fortunato has no idea. You, the reader, know what's coming, and Fortunato does not. It obviously is a major, major mind screw to kind of read the story and realize, whoa, he is messing with him the entire time, and the guy doesn't know it. Or he just thinks it's kind of a joke, right? He doesn't think he is capable of that, which does beg a really interesting question. Let's jump to three uh, A really quickly. Sometimes people don't believe other people are capable of really bad stuff. A classic example of this is Shakespeare's classic play, Othello. Othello has a best friend named Iago. Iago tells Othello, I think your other friend, is Cassio, is sleeping with your wife, Desdemona. Othello never asks his wife. He simply strangles her to death at the end of the play. And she's like, I never did anything to you. When finally Othello was brought face to face with his quote unquote best friend, he cannot believe it. Iago, I trusted you. Right? Of course, we can think about other texts where people trust people and then it ends up kind of getting all jacked up. How about this one for a 3B question? What was a time?